Hi everyone. Uh, welcome. My name is Josh. Uh, thought today I'd build a computer. I'm going to be using it for some gaming and some crypto mining. I'm going to be reusing as much parts as I can uh, that I have existing. That way what I make from mining isn't going into the build as much. So I just thought it might be interesting to film it and, and talk about some random stuff and maybe people would be interested in the process. So uh, let's take a look at uh, what I got. Uh, I'm going to start with having an older case, um, but the graphics card I'm going to be using is uh, way too big for it. So I'll have to take the motherboard out and the parts and then we'll set it up on the bench and get everything in it. And and I got, I got the new case coming, so that'll come tomorrow. So I figured I can do quite a bit before then so that all I have to do is put everything into the case and that'll save some time. I'm kind of excited to see how it performs. So um, let's go over here. I'll, I'll start taking apart the old case with the parts and then we'll assemble everything on the bench. And then we'll hopefully get an OS on there and play around with it, see how it performs. So let's move over to the bench and I'll set up the camera and we'll take a look at what we got. So this case is all aluminum. It's really nice, um, but it was built for a time when you had floppy drives and CD-ROMs. And you'll see when I open it up, hopefully I get the correct side. Yep. You'll see when I open this up that there isn't really room for a modern graphics card. So I got a couple of little not dual fans. All right, so if you see here, it, it may fit. I don't believe so, though, um, because of all this, this stuff here. So in modern cases, this is open because you don't have really much for drives. And then the SATA drives are usually mounted on the other side of the case. So um, let's start pulling this stuff out. So let's start taking out the graphics card. This one's a GTX 670. Pretty old graphics card. I wasn't running both of these cards. Um, I just put them in here for storage. So down in here, there's a little tab. So I just push out with my screwdriver so I can get the card out. Okay, there's another GTX 670. So what do we got here? So here we have this board. It's a Rampage 4 Extreme. It's a pretty nice board. Um, I don't utilize a lot of the features. It was designed for overclocking and water cooling. Uh, there's all these test points, crazy stuff like that. Um, but it is one of the best motherboards for this socket. Uh, I think it has an X79 chipset. Um, the pins are very prone to getting bent, so I put this cardboard over the socket so that I wouldn't accidentally have any bent pins. I don't see it. Yeah, this is the board. So I'm gonna pull this out. Uh, right now, uh, there's no power supply. Uh, there's a floppy drive and a CD-ROM drive. Um, I probably won't use that at all. 
So let's get the motherboard pulled out. Okay, so, so don't lose these screws. I'm gonna put them right back in the slot. Hopefully I can find another use for this case because it being aluminum it's a really nice case. I always liked it, but times have changed quite a bit. Alright, so first thing, let's disconnect There's the fan there. Uh, looks like the headers are disconnected already. There's some IO here, so this is this is the USB. Another USB, and then this is audio. Um, so th this had a two extra USB ports here. That'll get in the way, so let's pull that out. So there's that extra little USB extension. It's come in handy over the years. Especially for older computers, a lot of the time they had two USB ports, which once you put a mouse and a USB drive in there, you're pretty much out of USB ports. Okay, so I got all those screws screwed back in, so I'm going to just take out uh, one more fan here. All right, so I'm just going to go around and hopefully you can see this. Let's try to zoom in, I guess. Hopefully this stuff turns out. It looks kind of dark. All right, so I'll just go around. So as I'm taking these screws out, I'm laying them out um, visually the same way that they were on the board. Uh, they're all the same in this case, so it doesn't matter. It's just a good uh, or habit I like to do. If I keep doing it, then I don't forget when it does matter. Just pulling back on here slightly. It feels like I missed a screw, so I'm just trying to find that. Either that or it's just not what it feels like. It's this, but it's maybe this is this. This one is 
hard to get out on it by itself. Oh, that was it. a little bit bigger than ATX. I think it might be called extended ATX, um, which I think is extended ATX just means fits in an ATX, but could be wider or taller. Um, so yeah, there's the board. So I'm gonna move the case out of the way and uh, set this up. I forgot, I, I'm gonna replace the screws. I'm going to replace the screws I took out so that they don't get lost. Put them in a little bit tight so they don't rattle around and fall off, um, but not so tight that it backs off the stand when you unscrew it. That can be a pain. You have to get like a wrench to put on the stand while you unscrew the screw if the stand comes out, which can be annoying. Oops. So one thing that's easy to forget is the I.O. plate. That's unique to the motherboard, especially in this case. So this is the I.O. plate for this motherboard. So if I forget it, um, then it looks bad and then, yeah, that's not good. So I'm gonna pull, I'm done with the case, so I'll just get rid of the case and I'll play around with the motherboard. So I got this empty cardboard box. And this is my CPU. All right. So I uh, point the eye over this way. So when the card goes in, there's like a bracket that has to sit lower. Um, so this allows that to work. And just adjust here so you can see. All right, so now I'm going to inspect the CPU pins, make sure there's nothing bent. This socket is a 2011, and it's very prone to getting bent pins. Um, it's pretty easy to fix unless they're really bad. Um, but if you miss one, you can get some weird results. So let's take a look. All right, so. One of the best ways to tell is there's kind of like a shine on these pins and a uniform pattern. So if you see something that looks different, it's usually a bent pin. So pop this open. 
Alright, here we go. A little hard to see how this happens. Yeah, hold it back and then do anything else. Yeah, that's alright. Okay. So I think I'm seeing something. You see how it's all uniform except for that lower left? Right over there. It looks like it might be okay, but that is definitely out a little bit. I'm just going to bend that a little. Alright, let's see. This is probably pretty shaky. It's hard to see. It's big. Alright, what do we got here? There it is. Oh, okay. So when I look at it, it's actually just some thermal comp. I don't know. A little, it's like a little bit of dust. That would be good. Let's do that. Anything for the board? Another thing is um, they all kind of line up. Um, looks good. No, our eyes are really good at just seeing patterns, so if anything sticks out, but looks good. All right. So here it looks like a ton of um, pins and like it'd be impossible. Um, so if you look at the pads, also if it's misaligned, it can actually, it has decent amount of tolerance. If you look at like where it contacts, you know, it can be misaligned a little bit and still make contact with that pad. So let's just put this CPU in. Let's see what it is here. So it's not the fastest, but it's an i7 4930K. So the K means it can be overclocked. So let's just put this in and see. All right. Um, so on here, on this model, there's these two notches, and then you can see in the socket there's two notches, and then there's also this angle here, and then there's four notches. So make sure that this angle is going to line up, and then there's also a triangle. I don't see any. Oh, down here. Okay. Down here it shows. This triangle should line up there. Um, so in this case, unlike AMD, um, there's no pins on the bottom, there's just pads, so it doesn't take any force. And all the force is applied by this bracket. So you put this bracket down. And gotta make sure, make sure this piece goes on top. And then you push down and oops, here, there's a little catch there to go under like that. Let's see this thing. There, alright, so the CPU is installed. So that's about it for that. Okay, so we got our CPU installed. Uh, I'm gonna get the power supply. Um, in this case I have a new power supply. Um, because the graphics card I'm going to be using is a 3080, and that card can draw a lot of power um, suddenly, and older power supplies aren't equipped for that. So I made sure to get a new one from a trusted brand. It was on the, the cheapest I could sort of find in the 650 watt range, um, but also from a brand that I trust. Um, power supplies have come a long way. It used to be no-name brands are really bad, and you could kind of tell by the weight of the power supply, how good it was, but uh, with the certifications and everything, things are pretty standard. So um, I'm gonna go grab that and we'll set up the power and then we'll put on a, a heat sink. All right. This is our power supply. It's a 650 um, 80 platinum. Um, 
I think it was only ten dollars difference between this and like a bronze. So I decided to go for the platinum. Uh, nice thing about power supplies is you can reuse them. Uh, everything's pretty standard. There isn't anything that's changed too much. Um, I think it's Intel is. Yeah, I think it was Intel is looking into uh, maybe putting more power management on the motherboards, and then that way you can shrink the power supplies. Um, and that has a different connector, so if that catches on, then some of these old power supplies won't be useful. But so far, I've been able to reuse a lot of power supplies. power supply is um, nice and it's actually decently small so I like too is why I make why I fill up the case with something so it's modular and power supply so I'm gonna set that down here let's zoom out a little bit okay Lots of fancy stuff coming with power supplies. And just, and just nice cable ties, EVGA on it. Awesome cloth bag, which seems ridiculous, but it's actually been saved my life a lot of times because I just keep all the cables in there. And then if you have multiple modular power supplies, then it's easy to forget what goes to what. And, um, if there's room, I throw the manual in there, and then I can really know. Yeah, let's see if I can get in there. And then that way I know, you know, what's what's all this crap go to. All right, so we got a, you know, standard power input, modular cables. So this one's SATA. We'll need that. Oh, no, probably won't need that. Uh, unless I've got motherboard specific and just got some kind of adapter WST so this might be that new I'm not sure what that's for. I don't know some kind of it says WST on it. I don't know. See if it says in the manual. No, I don't see anything. That's all right. Being that this motherboard's old, I'm not going to need any unknown cables, so let's just throw this down here for now. All right, so I'm going to put power supply. Oh, I can't really see it. Let me fix that. Okay, so I got the power supply here and this will be where the motherboard will go. So let's do that. The only thing about this is the uh, power inputs, the main power is there and then there's like, three CPU power inputs. There's a power input there, there, and there. Let me do a separate video for that one there. Okay. Uh, so here's an overview of the board. And you can look at the power. So this is the main power input. There's a couple CPU inputs and one there too. Uh, this being an overclocking machine at the uh, takes a lot of input to make it nice and stable. Um, I think these boards did have issues though. But, um, and this one actually, I felt like there was something wrong with it, but I can't remember. I'm just hoping it works well enough to do some mining, even if it's missing some features. So let's uh, keep on. Alright, so in this Container, we have the main power 
cable. So there's this one. Um, sometimes having the power here works. Um, depends on how long. We got this part of the cable goes down here. Hard to do one handed. it's seated. That's good. All right, let's can that reach. Yep. So I can reach there. All right, so here we have the modular power supply. Uh, we have this MB label. So these cables go there. Kind of funny thing with modular power supplies, it's neat, but uh, you're always going to need those cables, so it's kind of funny that they're set aside like that. But. Okay. So we got um. Next one here is a CPU. So we got that uh, that cable CPU. Lock that. All right. So looking at the oops, we got the prongs on that. They are actually the same, so you can use either one, either side. Um, hopefully I have two of them. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna, okay, so I do have a large CPU socket, so I'm just gonna use the connected and not the separated CPU. to use. So on the CPU it's got a small clip and then if you use the double it's going to be a big clip so I do have to use, even though it's identical I have to use this. See this has a small clip so that has to go into the power supply. Alright so that's there. I'll take these and plug it in. My first rodeo with this thing. Let's try that. So, got that hooked up. So we have this, a four prong and a six prong. Um, for that, we can use, I believe we can use these. Double check. All right, so I'm a little at a loss because this has, this is the VJ one, that has a six to eight. I'm pretty sure that'll work here, let's try that. These are keyed, so that they don't go in if it's not the correct one. All right, so that one I'm gonna put in the VJ one. 
sorry. It's really hard to do. Alright, so that's MVJ1. I think what I'm going to try to do is see if this larger one This large one has the four pins, so I'm gonna try put that four pin into this paper. Yep. another VJ, but I need this for the video card. And I'm lacking there. Let me well, let's see what happens if I leave out that one. That might just be extra power. Um, I'm planning on running this lower voltage, hopefully, So, because for mining you don't need the CPU maxed out, it's more about the video card, and that'll save power. So let's switch this back to the larger and see what happens. If not, I might have to get an adapter. I got that back in there. Put this one up here. I felt like this one was like extra stability, so they might be able to. I don't know. All right. So we got power supply hooked up. So let's see if it lights up if I plug it in. Alright, so I'll take the power plug. Power supply is plugged in, but switched off, so let's switch it on. Alright, when I switched it on, it's hard to see here, but um, I turn off this light. There's a, the reset switch lit up there. So that's a good sign. And then over here is a BIOS selection LED. So um, this is what I thought was the issue. I remember um, there's only one BIOS, and sometimes people will select. Uh, this comes with two chips, but I borrowed one. Uh, some people will select the wrong chip, which by default isn't programmed, and then it won't boot. So that's a common failure with these boards that I've seen online, which is. Sometimes nice because then you can get them back to life. All right, so I got power. Um, let's put the graphics card in then and see if there's any sign of life without that connected. All right, so I'm going to turn the power off um, and then wait for the LED to go out. Okay. And just for fun, hit the power and that'll drain any capacitors. <clears throat> All right. So here's the graphics card for this build. It's a uh, RTX 3080, and it's humongous. Uh, that's why I needed to get a different case. 
And it's pretty heavy too. Um, let's take a look at this. First time opening this card. So I uh, won this card from New Egg Shuffle. Um, you keep an eye on that quite a bit, and I got lucky. Uh, I usually apply almost every day for a while until I got this card. Uh, this bracket's here because of how heavy this is. When it's in a case, they end up sagging over time because the only connection point is here um, when it's screwed in and here where it hooks into the motherboard. So all this extra weight tends to kick it this way and then it gets bent and the board bends. So this gives you a lot more stability. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because we're gonna mount it. Um, Laying down like this. Let's take this down. All right. There it is. All right, it's got. Um, this is why I need that one dedicated VGA cable because it needs a lot of power. Um, and then always remember to pull the protective covering there. And let's just put it in the motherboard. motherboard is PCI Express Gen 3 um, and this works with PCI Express Gen 4 um, but it doesn't require it so Gen 3 should work um, that might prove me wrong but I'm pretty sure so um, let's get a, I'm gonna get a cable and hook it up to I have a monitor right here so I'll hook it up to this monitor and we'll try power on really quick uh, just see if it posts but uh, I gotta put a heat sink on here if it does post. Um, but there's enough time to see if it posts and then shut it off without it hurting. Okay, so where is that? Just have an extra precaution. Yeah, it might get messed up. Oh, these aren't, these are, <laughs> I guess I got knocked to those and I put the old fans in a knock to the box, but that's fine. So I'm just gonna put this fan propped up here just to give it a little bit more time before it blows up. Okay, so I got that fan. Just gotta get a cable for this so I can plug it into this monitor. Probably all yelling at me, but I didn't hook up power, so let's do that. So the monitor's on. The nice thing about this board is it has uh, built-in start and end, part of the overclocking abilities. Um, although it's common nowadays for a uh, power button to be there. Um, usually I'll just, I uh, can't really see that point at. Yeah, um, usually I'll just jump over the header, but this is nice, I can just do that. Um, all right, I'm pretty nervous, but well, let's, uh, let's see what happens. Oh, power's off, so let's turn the power up. All right, we got our BIOS light and reset light over here. Ready? All right. Look and reset. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Posted. Cool. So, there we go. So we got, um, let's go over there. So you got the run page four extreme, uh, a mega, a gig of RAM, and uh, here's our CPU 3400 megahertz, current speed 3900. Uh, so I'm gonna shut it off before the CPU burns up. Yeah, the LED just went out, so I'm gonna just hit power a couple of times to discharge everything. All right, so everything worked. Uh, the only thing left is uh, CPU cooler. So let's do that. All right, so I have the CPU cooler, and I don't know if it's on there, but I looked and it supports yeah, 2011 right there. So oops. that's not focusing. All right, so it supports the 2011 on that list there. So let's uh, try it out. I got this this cooler a long time ago. Um, I just never used it. It's supposed to be really, or for the time, it was really good. So um, I tend to use water cooling uh, blocks, uh, just not like the all out one, just the closed loop ones. Uh, I like how quiet they are. I've seen tests where the fan ones perform almost the same. Uh, so it's more preference. And um, fans have come a long way, but I always found the uh, closed loops to be very quiet. Uh, I don't like my CPU to be noisy. All right, so there is bracket on here. Um, but if we're lucky, all right, so we have this bracket came with the fan. Um, but if you look at the socket, there's screw ports. Um, some coolers use those and some have you remove the backer. If we do that, I'll have to take out the CPU. But uh, let's take a look at the instructions. Um, sometimes the, the brackets will be for AMD or other CPU. All right, so let's take a look. So for the Intel, Intel LGA 2066 2011, um, it's going to screw into these ports here. So it looks like you screw in some adapters using a specialized tool, and then you screw in your chain block here. So, all right. so yeah, here's the retaining clip. Here are the tools. So there's that specialized tool, and then some something there is gonna be what we need. Uh, I'm just gonna set the phone down while I open this up. I need two hands. All right. So here's that specialized tool. And there's two things that would use it. That looks way too long. Um, that looks like the right ones. Yeah, so based on the picture, that's a short post. So these are gonna be it. So I'm just going to lightly screw them. Let's see what I'm doing, okay. All right, I'm just gonna lightly screw them in and then use that tool to finish it. So 
I remember back in the day um, with the AMD processors, if you turned it on uh, with no heatsink, it would heat up and then crack the CPU die. So um, the nice thing with the Intel, they have a beat in, built in heat spreader. Um, so that saves the CPU for a little while until it gets too hot. So, all right, so I'm gonna use that adapter. I don't know if this screwdriver will work. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. So just tighten these a little bit. Probably doesn't have to be anything too crazy. <clears throat> Not, not going down the highway at 90 miles an hour. There, all right. So I don't like to use provided thermal compound. I like Arctic Silver, um, but I don't have any on hand, so I'm just gonna do down there. Alright, so this doesn't really say there's like numbers. There's numbers on here, I don't know. Uh, what it's trying to tell me. I don't see any. There, what's this? What's this for AMD though? Let's just find what fits. So you can see Okay, sorry. Read the instructions. So if you look here, there's specific notches. And for us, 2011, we want to be in the upper notch. And then the number I don't really see. I figure it'll line up. So let's try. <laughs> now we get these to line up. I should line up there. Line up there. There. Okay. So everything's lined up with the, the posts. Plastic on the bottom. All right. Okay. So, which way do I want it to go? Is my
that it used to be the hospital towards the CPU, I mean the power supply, and then we pull it out from the case. Well, oh, I'll do it that way. I can always um, you can easily detach this thing and move it. So we're going to point it this way. Tight squeeze here. So we got thermal compound to dripping down the side, which gives me anxiety. So just gonna clear that out. All right. So this has a not even really a thread, just a notch. Is it threaded? So I'm gonna try to sneak this in here. And Stuff. All right, so that's probably why they have lighters on there. So we're locked into focus. Focus. On. No. All right, there. So we're locked into number three. So let's shrink that. Put it through. Put it through there. Expand it back to. Can't even see it. Well, I can't. See. Can't see it, but let's just uh, get that notch. So put that notch there. And it appears to be. Oh, you really hard to see. See that little peg there. That seems to be fitting there. I don't know if there's any. I yeah, just think that gives it some resistance. Okay. see anything interesting in the instructions here at the moment. Okay, so 
one important thing, which is also demonstrated in the manual, is you tighten down crosswise so you have even pressure, so you don't cause the die to crack or anything. So starting on the lower left, tighten it down some, and then going over to the upper right. Just tightening it, tightening it down just enough so it grabs. Um, and then in the instructions, just go directly straight over. So I'm doing that. Get that to grab. And then go to the final one. Whew. It's concerning force. I'm a little concerned how much force is required for that. So I can still move the fan on top of the CPU, so it can't be that much force. All right, yeah, that's all they're good now. So we have a CPU fan, so. So the fan, the label side is the, the air goes towards, so um, this is blowing and there's a, there's a, it's hard to see there, but there's an arrow there, so it tells you blows this way. So whichever way it's clamped on, it's blowing across, so my what I wanted to do before is have it blow towards the CPU, so I'm gonna put it on this side, or sorry, PS, the power supply. So I'm putting it on this side. A little difficult with the RAM in the way. So this um, CPU fan was pretty, um, was supposed to be one of the better ones back in the day. It's a, um, what's it called? Evo, 212 Evo. Um, that series was pretty popular. All right, so put the GPU back in and put the RAM back in. Turn the power on and make sure that fan <laughs> turns on and let's take a look here. If everything's good, then I'll get uh, keyboard and mouse clean up a little bit and we'll take a look. Oh, it's still recording. All right, so you can see it going through the postcodes and it just posted. And there we go. So it's trying to boot. Uh, let's see there's zero devices. So I'm gonna get a keyboard and mouse and pick up a little 
and then we'll take a look. Okay, so we got uh, no keyboard detected, but it wants you to hit F1 to run setup. So I plugged in a keyboard. It's an old PS2 style. So it might not work, so let's try it. Yeah, F1 does nothing, so let's reboot. I hit delete to go into the setup. Oh, I see two keyboards and one mouse. Interesting. I was complaining about boot device, but I don't have anything hooked up. Um, let's take a look here. Just want to double check. All right, let's check the temperatures. CPU is 37 Celsius and stable. So we're doing good. So the cooler seems to be working. Let's see the voltages. So CPU voltage. Don't know what that should be, but it's looks well, stable. Cause I'm a little worried about that extra cable. So we'll just see. We'll just have to see what happens if it's stable here. Um, so for this, I'm gonna just load. So just like an air cooled gamer. No. I have an auto level level disabled. Keep all that power saving mode enabled. Okay, so once those boots, I'm gonna power it off and then have a M.2 SATA card or PCI Express card that I'm gonna put in there and see if we have a device. So here's our PCI Express M.2 card. <laughs> Pretty simple. I'm not sure what that is, but um, depending on the key, you can put it in there. Um, as part of the Newegg shuffle, uh, which I thought helped in this case is it, it was a combo where it was this card and it, it was the 37, 3080 and, and this uh, M.2. And that should work out well as long as I have the bias updated. Now I have to figure out the application. So here we go. This is um, PCI Express um, Gen 4 compatible and NVMe M.2. Uh, I think it'll still work. I'm pretty sure it's backwards compatible. It just won't go as fast. Yes, we'll find out. So either it doesn't work because of the card or it doesn't work. Hmm, so we got a small problem. Alright, so this is where it keys in. Oops. 
Oops, no, sorry. M key, M2 key, so key and on. No, definitely not. Okay. Alright. So that's supposed to have a screw. Let's check the box. Alright, so we got a post and a screw. But I need two screws. Post and screw, so I guess we're okay. Uh, we need one screw to go through the board and into the post, and then another screw to uh, go into the, between the board and the post. Or sorry, the the drive and the post. So. All right, so we got uh, we're lining up with this this part here. So let's pull that out. Flip that over. So, just got up. That screw over there. Hold it with my finger. Put the post. Screw it in as much as I can. This again isn't mechanically doing anything. But I guess that would just give it a little twist. No, not on that one. A little bit of twist there. So, Alright, and then put this in here again. Cool, and I'm not gonna borrow the screw from this other. So this has not the full bandwidth of the PCI Express lane, um, but it doesn't fit in that. It just goes in a, a standard. I'm just going to move it this way so it's farthest away from the, the airflow. So it shouldn't make much difference, but just in case. All right, let's boot it up and see if it detects that as a drive. All right, let's uh, go into setup. I can't remember. There was something we had to do. Uh, if it does work. So we got some Windows install. Let's see what happens. So if I remember correctly, the issue was it would you could see this the PCI Express <laughs> Windows 8. Let me try a different one. Probably don't want Windows 8 on it. That's what this is. This might be Windows Vista. <laughs> I don't know. All right, it's Windows 7. Let's, uh, <laughs> I don't know if 
some of the things that were supported. So didn't pick up anything. All right, let's um, I'm gonna shut it down and unhook that theta. Ah. All right, so I'm gonna. That might not be compatible, but um. Let me, I'm going to stop recording and then try some things and I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm back. So I pulled this card and different uh, M.2 drive, uh, NVMe drive from my other computer. Uh, it's a one terabyte that makes more sense here and I put the two terabyte one in that computer. So maybe there is an issue with um, PCA Express Gen 4, so this one is a Gen 2 or 3, so let's give that a try. Put it, so I'm going to just put it at the bottom card slot again, and let's uh, turn on the computer. So if this doesn't work, uh, there's uh, two SATA drives in there that are not really being used, so I can uh, pull those. But I figured I'd try this first. Hmm. Looks like the Windows 8 installer. I didn't remember Windows 10 having that. Oh, oh here we go. So even though it's asking, I can choose, I don't have a product key. All right, so I want pro, I forget what the N, N stands for. But I want pro, I think remember N wasn't as good, like missing something, except. Custom install. All right, cool. So it's picking it up. So let's delete. Install in there. All right, so th this picked it up, but that does that if it's the modified BIOS or not, um, the issue will be if it tries to boot um, without the modified BIOS, it can't boot from a, a PCI Express drive. So I like using the PCI Express drive because then I don't have a SATA cable, a power cable, it's just all self-contained, um, doesn't take up much room. Uh, it's even nicer in modern computers. You can just install it on the motherboard so you don't have to have anything. All right, so we got the files, so it's gonna restart. Oh, so here we go. So this time when it booted, it booted again off the USB drive. Um, that might still not be an issue. So I'm going to try to go uh, reboot it and then go into the boot menu, which I forget what it is, like a 10 or something. Oh, oops. Oh, 
So here we go. So this should work. So it's picking up both food options. Um, oh no, no. So this is only picking up the travel star. It's weird, it's picking up as two things. Yeah, so this has two boot loaders. All right, so this doesn't have the modified bio, so <clears throat> that means it can't boot from that drive. So I'm gonna grab the SATA drives from that computer and use those instead. So I'm just gonna pause and I'll be back. Okay, so I got the SATA drives. I now have to hook up SATA cable to the module modular power supply. So that's in here. That's SATA and then the old Molex. Sorry about the crinkling. So that's a SATA cable. This will go into the um, power supply and then these go out to the drives. So these two drives were in RAID 0 on the other computer. I don't know if the, it's compatible with the RAID on this. I th probably won't be because it's a... Uh, this one I think is an Intel RAID and that's an AMD RAID. So there's that. So that's the power, and then I'm gonna use these, these cable, this cable here to go to the um, data lines. So use that. Then down here, the red is a 6G port, and the black is 3G, 6G faster because the number is bigger so I'm gonna try those first if it doesn't work we'll try something else all right so I'm gonna pull out this so it doesn't interfere with anything. All right, so you can see what a mess that is now, where before it was nice and clean, just had that card, um, and these are slower, so all disadvantages there, but um, not fully compatible for booting, so we're gonna use this. So let's uh, go back to installing Windows 10. All right, so let's try this again. Since I removed this drive, nothing we just did will be there, so I'll just have to start again. So there we go. So it, it picked up those two drives. Um, I'm going to try to go into setup. I can't remember if it's in the BIOS or on the screen. So let's read the screen again. I wasn't. Well, let's see what it picks up. I don't think this will work. I don't have a product key. Pro. Like 
that. Custom install. So we're seeing two partitions. If it was RAID 0, then you'd see only one. So I'm going to reboot. Since there's nothing on the drive, I can just partially shut it down. It's got to be in that thing that shows up when it first boots. So I have to pay more attention. Okay, let me look at the manual. Okay, so I was looking at the manual. Um, on the back here, there's two sets of red ports. Um, and looking in the manual, it says one of the two sets is controlled by the Intel um, chipset, and then the other two are controlled by the as media controller. So one of those has RAID and one doesn't. So I'm gonna to move to the two, I'm in the two back. So I'm gonna move it into the two forward red ports and we'll try it again. And in the listing, it says it's using Intel uh, rapid storage te technology. So the chipset's an Intel chipset, so I think that'll be what solves it. So I'm gonna move them over one. Okay, they're plugged in, let's boot it up. Yeah, on the surface, I can't tell the difference between those. Okay, so here we go. So we got a different BIOS there. That's the Intel BIOS for RAID. And the two disks were listed. So that's more what I want. And then I do control I for, oops, too slow. I have to do control I for the menu so that I can set up RAID. Okay, so here in the green, list both drives and they're non-RAID disks. So we'll just create a RAID volume. I don't care what it's called. We'll just do VOL1. Um, so what RAID does is it utilizes two disks as one. Um, and you can do it two ways. You can split up the writes to two drives so you get a boost in performance so every other write goes to a different drive so um, it can go quicker or you can duplicate the writes so you write the same thing on both drives and then if one drive dies um, you don't lose your data. Uh, for me I'm just doing RAID 0 I don't have anything on here I'm worried about losing and um, just keep the default for everything else. Um, warning me that the data will be lost, but there's nothing on there. All right, so I got got that set up. Um, sometimes you can mark it for boot. Okay, so here it says bootable, yes. So, so now we're good. So we're going to exit. So now when Windows searches for drive it'll see it as one drive uh, I just like it because it with RAID 0 you double the drive size and get a performance boost it's not usually double it's depends on how much you're writing too but, um, but uh, at least in the past I don't know if it's still true uh, there's some caching and optimizations that happen with SATA drives 
um, and sometimes it's not available when you raid the drive, so there is a possibility that it's not as fast. I'm not sure, but it doesn't really matter in this case. I'm more interested in just keeping it simple. All right, so don't have a key. Windows 10 Pro. Accept. Custom install. All right, so here before there was two drives listed. Now there's one and it's double the capacity of the, of the individual drive. So I'm gonna select that. And I'm gonna fast forward all this because it's pretty boring. Okay, we're in Windows 10. So I'm gonna get internet set up and a mouse because I've just been using a keyboard. I got this little tiny Wi-Fi adapter. Uh, it'll work for it'll work for our purposes. So put that in. It has a CD-ROM to install it. I'm hoping Windows 10 is modern enough to pick it up anyway. Oops. Just the Ethernet. Okay. So, I think I have a CD ROM drive around here. Okay, so let's try this again. So, I got the drivers on this flash drive. I made it more comp complicated than it needed to be by copying it from the CD. Um, and then I remembered I did this before and I think it's not, it doesn't work on Windows 10 unless you have the most recent driver. So I downloaded that and put it on here after copying everything from the CD and hooking it up. All right, so. <clears throat> uh, let's get rid of some of this crap. News and interest don't show the mic. Not Cortana. Don't want the search. Ah, oh, that's better. Okay, there we go. So now we can see the Wi-Fi.
there. So we're on Wi-Fi. So this is huge. All right. So I'm gonna <laughs> install the updates. So here I'm checking uh, if it's in quad channel, which it is. Um, I'm looking at the SPD profiles. So currently we already got 533 with 77 timing. So it looks like it's running at the higher profile. So.
Okay, so here's the CPU benchmark results. I don't know how to tell if this is good, I'm guessing. <laughs> So it looks like it's doing all right. Um, I haven't overclocked this at all. I don't really plan to. But, uh, let's do CPU. I mean, times by extreme should work with the graphic card. I just don't know if the GPU. Will be a bottleneck, so let's give that a try. <laughs> 